Now we will come to the problem solving. 14.8. Now this chapter 13 is on dispersion model and chapter 14 is on tank in series model. We have studied all basics of non-ideal flow in chapter number 11 and solved all the problems from chapter number 11. Then these two models, tank in series model and dispersion model. So they are just to be studied at introductory level in your BTEC course. In MTech curriculum in your university also everything is to be studied in details. In that you will be studying zero parameter model, one parameter model, two parameter models. Zero parameter models are segregation model and maximum mixedness model. Segregation model in a way we have mm, seen, we have solved one problem uh, at the end which the problems which we have solved x bar is equal to x into e dt or 1 minus x bar is equal to 1 minus x into integral e dt. So those problems of fluid as bed at the end which we have solved that is almost segregation model then you have maximum mixedness model that is called zero parameter model because there is zero no adjustable parameter. Then one parameter model this dispersion model and a tank in series model these are called one parameter models and there are two parameter models also and it depends case to case which model will suit which system and which will give the best result which are close to the real reactor operation. So uh, 13 and 14 chapter is restricted just as an introduction. So I have introduced you to dispersion model. What does that mean? What is the concept of vessel dispersion, num dispersion number and one or two problems we have seen just to determine the vessel dispersion number. Similarly here tank in series model introductory concept not the complete chapter in details and based on these introductory uh, concepts that is what is tank in series model how to write a material balance for first reactor, second reactor, third and nth reactor and from that how to collect the terms and write a general equation for n number of tanks in series. So these are tanks in series model and from these models how to determine mean time and variance and from that we have to find out this. So we will see this. From a pulse input into a vessel we obtain the following output signal. We want to represent the flow through the vessel with the tanks in series model. So we want to use this tank in series model. Determine the number of tanks to be used. So here again you will see these concepts we require from chapter number 11 basics of non-ideal flow. Area under the C pulse curve will be 0 to infinity integral C dt. That is nothing but summation of C i delta T i. Okay? And if delta T i is equidistant then here for averaging this cancels out. Here you have to consider it. And that is to be checked with material balance m by v and if it matches the consistency is there. Mean t bar this is important for us this we want to find out from pulse input data. So we have concentration time data. So t into c dt divided by integral c dt integral t c dt divided by integral c dt. So mean time and that is in discrete form. It is Ti Ci delta Ti divided by Ci delta Ti. If delta Ti is equidistant, equal interval, like every minute you are taking readings or every 5 minutes you have data, every 10 minutes, then here you will have every time to be multiplied by 10, here also every time to be multiplied by 10 and this is to be taken out common and number of terms will be same. So you don't need to use this and this 
t bar is v by v equivalent for e curve you know individual c divided by this area under the curve that is given by integral 0 to infinity c dt so for each point of time for each time reading you get e value and that you plot as e curve that we have already done many times now variance is sigma square integral 0 to infinity t minus t bar whole square into e dt this we have seen in dispersion model and number of tanks n is simply mean square that is t bar square mean time square divided by variance which is sigma square it is not variance square sigma square itself is variance okay so this is c pulse curve this kind of data you will have and this area under the curve is 0 to infinity c dt and c each reading of c is to be divided by area this constant term and that will give you the values of e and you plot e curve now we will analyze the given data and we will try to find out the terms required that is t bar and variance from that we want to find out number of tanks so what is given is this data t and c data so this we call as ti and ci you have number of points so 1 3 5 7 and so on in equal interval we have so we'll ci is given we will find ti ci by multiplying these individual columns and sum up so sigma ti ci by sigma ci that is 320 into 40 is equal to 8 if this interval is not same then you have to take individual delta ti value multiply here and multiply here so t bar we have got as eight okay so this value 320 by 40 sigma ti ci by ci now integral c dt this you can obtain use the uh, numerical integration or graphical integration and this you get as 80 integral c dt e is c by area if you look at the values of c here 0 0 last values are 0 0 and in between you have equal values 10 10 10 10 so you have typically from 0 it rises to 10 then it is steady and then it falls to 0 once again so very typically different kind of curve you can say e we want that is c by area area is integral c dt is 80 this is 10 so 10 by 80 everywhere so you get 0 0.125 0 0.125 so c e curve also you will get same its value from 0 it will pick up to 0 0.125 at t is equal to 5 and then it will remain constant up to t is equal to 11 and then it falls up to t is equal to 15 to 0 at t is equal to 13 it is 0 t minus t bar so this is t value and this is t bar 1 minus 8 minus 7 and so on last value 15 minus 8 is 7 square so we will get all positive negative terms positive terms t minus t bar whole square so this 49 9 and so on ok e into t minus t bar whole square so this column is to be multiplied by this column so you can find out all these values and integral of this is found here by the numerical method and it is 5 okay it comes out to be 5 now what is n 
number of tanks to be employed it is simply t bar square by variance that is sigma square t bar square t bar is 8 so squared 64 variance is 5 so 64 by 5 12.8 so we need 12.8 tanks so we will not take 12.8 but 13 tanks you have to take the next integer so 13 tanks are required that you can say from this data here typically this c curve is like this so for the first two points it is zero then it picks up goes to 10 and then it remains constant at 10 and then it falls again to zero and maintained to zero e curve will be exactly similar in shape because e curve is nothing but a transformation of c curve and for e curve what is the condition area under the curve will be 1 so you calculate this and check you get area under the curve is 1 here it reaches this point 0.125 and remains constant there next 14.10 a reactor with number of dividing baffles is to be used to run the reaction so in this person model we have seen reactor it is divided into compartments by placing the baffles and we have seen area occupied by the baffles we have calculated there and then volume occupied by the baffles finally fraction that we have calculated so we are running the reaction a gives r minus r is equal to 0.05 ca means first order with rate constant 0.05 a pulse tracer test gives output curve as the data given in the table we'll see that we have to find out so many things find the area and the c versus t curve so c curve e versus t means e curve calculate the variance then how many tanks in series is this vessel equivalent to so how many tanks in series it is equivalent to then calculate conversion assuming plug flow assuming mix flow assuming that tanks in series model is valid and directly from the data rtd data okay so what we have the data is ti ci 10 20 30 40 50 60 so equidistant equal intervals so directly i can find out ti ci summation is 10400 ci summation is 300 and this sigma ti ci divided by sigma ci is 34.66 that is our value of mean time t bar simple integral cdt again use the numerical method i have used this two point formula in that two consecutive values you add and multiply by this difference divided by 2 and this each interval that element it is calculated add all the elements and you get 2650 so e is c by area area is given by this integral cdt its value is 2650 so divide each value of c from this column by 2650 and you get this e values okay t minus t bar so you know t and t bar so this value my minus t bar so you will get negative and positive values both t minus t bar whole square all positive values then this column t minus t bar square you multiply by e so this column and this column multiplication you get these things and you take again take integral of all the elements two consecutive points and so on so this plus this divided by 10 minus 0 by 2 is 5 so this 10 minus 2 is 5 so this plus this you have to multiply by 5 all the values okay and finally you add all these elements 
to get the total value of the integral and that value of integral is 409 and that is giving you sigma square or variance because integral t minus t bar whole square into e dt is variance okay so t this value is to be used so you can make a plot find out area under the curve or use numerical method of integration two consecutive points you use or how many points you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so accordingly use the formula for even numbers odd numbers you can use 3 8 rule 1 third rule whatever you want okay and uh, if you don't want to get more confused if you don't have sufficient practice and confidence then simply plot the graph and find out the area of the curve, area under the curve that will give you the result best result with confidence so we got variance and t bar so n is equal to t bar square so square of this 34.66 that comes out to be 1201 and this value is already sigma square 409 you divide this you get 2.938 number of tanks you want so 3 approximated to next digit even if it is 2.2 then you don't you have to take still three tanks nothing less than this you have to take next integer value okay so n is equal to 3 in this case so what is asked how many tanks in series required so three tanks in series we have answered only one question now we have to find c curve and e curve variance of the E curve we have already found out. So C and D are answered. This is the plot of C curve. This is the plot of E curve. Okay. That you can always do. Now plug flow reactor. Plug flow reactor. We know it is a first order reaction. So for plug flow. XA is equal to 1 minus E raised to minus KT. And here T is T bar that we have found out 34.66. K is given here 0 0.05. This value T bar is 34.66. So you substitute it. XA is 0.823. For mixed flow reactor, XA is K t by 1 plus kt here t is replaced by t bar so k into t bar 1 plus k into t bar and that comes out to be 0.634 in mixed flow reactor tank in series model ca by ca 0 value is equal to 1 upon 1 plus k t bar by n raised to n okay this is for tank in series model so we have seen this also in n mixed flow reactors of equal size in series when n tends to infinity it behaves as a plug flow okay so this is nothing but n plus kt by n raised to n again so if you substitute all these values known values k t n okay and n here you can use n is equal to 3 also and that 3 is actually you want to employ 3 reactors here you can substitute 3 and get the result or whatever exact value I have so without that taking 2.9 tanks as 3 is a approximation so without approximation you want to calculate so you it is better to use calculated value of n instead of bringing that approximation that we will be doing for operating purpose so it is 0.256 so 
CA by CA0 is 0.256, XA will be 1 minus CA by CA0 that is 0.744. From RTD data, you know this CA bar by CA0 is equal to integral 0 to infinity CA by CA0 into EDT. Okay. So CA by CA0 into EDT. If you solve this, you get 0.35 and XA will be 0.65. CA by CA0, this value you know. And E values you know, delta T values you know, you have to find out this integral. And this is from 0 to 70. E dt and multiply by these values. So, uh, this value you can see CA by CA0 once evaluated it is constant 0.256 and if you evaluate integral E dt from this here you have E, so integral E dt. So multiply this column by this column and find out integral. Like we have done integral C dt, you have to find out integral E dt. And that will be area under the curve or E curve. And here uh, it is between the limits time is given so RTD data is for whatever time span you have to calculate that and this is 0.65. So we can see here I uh, compiled this data here which model we have used and how much value of conversion we get. So plug flow reactor model 82.3% conversion tanks in series model 0.744% conversion here it is tanks in series model 74.4% mixed flow reactor model MFR 0.634 is the fractional conversion percentage conversion 63.4 and residence time distribution model this conversion is 65% so this model and this model it is almost matching and for tank in series model it is more towards plug flow reactor because if you have more num more and more number of tanks if you solve this for five tanks it will almost match or for six tanks it will almost match so it is so what we can say for this case particularly you have mixed flow reactor this value and plug flow reactor this, this value so it is more towards plug flow for tanks number is 3 you increase the number of tanks and you will be more closer to this ok now if you compare this with this plug flow reactor model because tanks in series model naturally you will not use if you are going for a setup of industrial setup of tank in series then you will not go for two tanks or three tanks only. There will be n, n will be reasonably high so that it will approach to the plug flow reactor model that we have studied when we have studied reactors in series. So here this is also almost plug flow and this is also plug flow almost same thing you can say for n is equal to say 7, 8, whatever. In plug flow reactor model, we get this value of conversion after calculations 82.3 percent conversion. And in tank in series model, which is almost representing the same thing, it is 74.4, almost 8 percent less. Why? 
so this is ideal reactor model and there are non idealities which are taken care of to some extent not completely by the tank in series model so this these results will be more closer to reality whatever the results we get from ideal reactor model whether plug flow or mix flow you will get the performance always less conversion in the real reactors and here it is 8% less that means this non ideal reactor model has taken care of non idealities to some extent still it is not a perfect model but in many cases this tank in series model and dispersion model gives you reasonably acceptable results so uh, we will stop here today and today we come to the end of this lecture series all the lectures in chemical reaction engineering one subject which is mainly homogeneous reactor design so batch reactor design plug flow reactor design and mix flow reactor design so we have seen those models we have seen interpretation of batch reactor data many types of reversible irreversible shifting order constant volume variable volume autocatalytic reactions homogeneous catalyzed reactions then reactions in series reactions in parallel series parallel combinations all these kinetics we have studied we have studied the reactor setups mixed flow reactors in series mixed flow plug flow combinations equal size mixed flow reactors in series unequal size so larger is placed first and smaller is placed later or vice versa how the performance is affected combination of plug flow reactor and mixed flow reactor plug flow followed by mixed flow mixed flow followed by plug flow their comparison three reactors set up of two mixed flow and let us say one plug flow how will you place two mixed flow of different sizes so in which order you will place them to get the best performance so we have seen maximization or minimization of rectangles finding out that those intermediate points then models how to find out tau and v directly from the graphs one upon minus ra versus xa plots or one upon minus ra versus ca plots using the models that we have seen we have solved almost all the problems from the exercises of all the chapters we have covered so far except this tank in series and dispersion model where as per our curriculum we are supposed to restrict to just introduction of the concepts and still i have taken little bit more okay then we have studied qualitative and quantitative analysis for multiple reactions best kind of setup available to maximize the production of desired product how you should carry out the reactions then we have seen temperature effects in temperature effects we have studied the charts at different rate laws with respect to temperature how the conversion varies so that we have studied then introduction to non ideal flow and this tank in series model and mixed flow reactor model so tanks in series model we have studied today in this lecture dispersion model we have studied earlier and all these things are mostly dealing with the we have studied homogeneous reactions only and heterogeneous reactions there that is the part of chemical reaction engineering 2 okay but you don't have to wait for the lectures of chemical reaction in 2 already the lectures on all the topics as per curriculum of most of the universities in india and abroad also that has been 
already uploaded so cre2 lecture series is available to you there heterogeneous reactions gas liquid reactions gas solid reactions gas solid liquid reactions have been studied so in gas solid reactions shrinking core model shrinking particle model that has been studied the different controlling resistances chemical reaction controlling gas from diffusion controlling ashler diffusion controlling and so on and for that different shapes cylindrical geometry spherical geometry flat plate geometry and many equations we have derived then particle size distribution it is not a single size particle it's a mixture then how to model it and how to solve the problems those we have already done in that part you can refer to those lectures gas liquid reactions we have studied how to design the tower for the reactions right from instantaneous reaction to extremely slow reaction so those reaction regimes in heterogeneous systems will there will be kinetics term and in addition to that mass transfer term or diffusion term because when you have two phases they should come in contact first so that process is diffusion process mass transfer process and once they come in contact reaction will take place so we have reaction term as well as mass transfer term so how to combine those terms combine the resistances and find the overall weight loss for heterogeneous systems so for gas solid gas liquid and gas solid liquid gas solid liquid mean mostly you have solid or solid catalyst or catalyst on solid supports and their catalysis part also we have done non isothermal reactions have been studied there so what is steady state in non isothermal reactions what is multiplicity of steady states that we have studied what exactly mean by multiple steady state what happens ignition curves and extinction curves those have been studied problems on non isothermal reactions are not very easy to solve because it involves simultaneous differential equations so by hand calculations it is difficult to solve so we have to use the software packages for that that also we have seen and then we have studied a special kind of non elementary kinetics that means we have studied non elementary reactions uh in this course and that extension of non elementary reaction kinetics which is very important applied to so pseudo steady state hypothesis or pseudo steady state approximation applied to polymerization reaction polymerization kinetics so polymerization kinetics is not just easy just in paper two or reaction in two lecture series two polymerization reaction step growth and chain growth or free radical polymerization we have studied those models there and that are not very easy to understand and very easy to apply also so those models we have seen and that is just an introduction because polymerization is a big topic and polymerization reaction engineering is itself a subject so you will find we will we have studied there only one chapter and that two very introductory level so there are books on only polymerization reaction engineering thousand pages book so it's a past subject you can study based on this studies biochemical reaction engineering so we have studied mikhailis maintain kinetics then there you have um monod's kinetics briggs haldane kind of kinetics the principles remain same so biochemical reaction is also very interesting in our university we have biochemical engineering separate subject so that you will be studying in most of the university it is either a core subject or an elective subjects so that is also very interesting so 
uh, we have come to the end of this lecture series of chemical reaction engineering one and we'll stop here i appeal to all the viewers to watch chemical reaction engineering two lecture series also that has been released first and this is released later uh, because uh, i have to match with the when in the last the students who are in final year they were studying in seventh semester so that was done first and then this is in the sixth semester so next batch students who are in the sixth semester and this has been done now though i have teaching this subject for many years this recordings have been done only because of this covid 19 pandemic so thanks to covid 19 and corona uh, that the classroom teaching we could not do and to take care of my students i have recorded all these lectures but anyway uh, this opportunity because of covid 19 is a blessing in disguise i have prepared all these transparencies and a lot of work on this and solved almost all the problems from the exercises of levin spin which is really not very easy task so as i told you although all the solutions of problems are available in this lecture series first listen to theory lectures study your book and sit with the book and try solving on your own the problems from exercise two things will happen if you get the correct solution if you are able to solve it immediately match your solutions later on so problem solving sessions you should watch later after trying on your own so if you are able to solve on your own it's a great thing you should be happy and if not doesn't matter you find out where you have gone wrong and slowly you will practice and you will understand and finally you will develop what is called as problem solving skills in this subject it is problem solving skills if you refer to book by scott hogler which has been used for chemical reaction engineering too for uh, many subjects uh, chemical reaction too for few topics i have used that book you refer to that book there specially there are sessions on problem solving skills so you have to develop those skills and you will also appreciate if you try on your own first without looking into the solutions provided in this lecture series you will appreciate and you will come to know it's not an easy job it's not easy every problem is a little bit different kind of problems read the preface of octo levens bill what he says about the subject what he says about the problem solving skills that is important any book you study first read the preface what author wants to say and what author wants to convey through that text it is normally mentioned there so we will stop here today and uh, one more thing i would like to tell you that share this lecture series with your friends who are studying in different engineering institutes because when i have seen the analytics analytics in uh, youtube studio i have found that outside the state also many viewers are watching this then around 18% viewers are from outside india from abroad so it is reaching somewhere and i don't want to claim anything 
through this lecture through this lecture series there are lectures available by professors on youtube professor from iits iisc from different institutions from foreign universities also that this is not the only lecture series which is available watch those lectures also and whichever you find best for you follow that okay anyway the attempt is to make you understand the subject to make you understand the problems and how to solve the problems with this practice if you develop problem solving skills and in day here my attempt is to make you study to gain the knowledge in the subject of reaction engineering and which this is one subject which makes a chemical engineer very different from any other branch of engineering okay so process control mechanical engineering students also study electrical engineering also study in more details and so on heat transfer is studied by mechanical engineers in much more detail than we study fluid mechanics is studied by civil engineers mechanical engineers and what not so fluid mechanics heat transfer some mass transfer is also studied by mechanical engineering not in those details but reaction engineering is not even introduced to any branch of engineering so this is unique if you read the preface of octave levens bill you will really uh, come to know and uh, understand what exactly this subject will give you if you have the thorough knowledge of this subject so we will stop here today and this we come to the end of this lecture series thank you for viewing